Nitroglycerin is an extremely powerful explosive chemical that's well known for its destructive power. Invented in 1846, it was the very first chemical developed that was stronger than black powder. Due to its extreme sensitivity, the inventor of nitroglycerin, a Dr. Escanio Sobrero, warned strongly against its use as an explosive. Despite his warnings, as you might have already guessed, the very first commercial use of nitroglycerin was as an explosive. As an expected result, this led to routine factory explosions, and in 1864, one of these explosions killed the then 21-year-old scientist Emile Nobel. Following this tragedy, Emile's older brother Alfred set out to develop a way to stabilize nitroglycerin into a safer and more practical explosive. I won't be giving out any details as to his process, as that would make this video essentially a guide on making weapons rather than the chemistry of a particularly unstable compound. However, he was successful and patented dynamite a couple years after his brother was killed. Since then, nitroglycerin has been used extensively as an explosive, with vast amounts produced during both world wars. Despite its name, nitroglycerin isn't actually a nitro compound at all, but instead it's a nitrate ester with glycerol. As a result of this chemical distinction, nitroglycerin actually sees extensive use in medicine. This followed the invention of amyl nitrite, and in 1879, after extensive low dose of testing, Dr. William Morell published his findings on the effectiveness of nitroglycerin for treating high blood pressure in the Lancet. As a fun side note, Alfred Nobel was prescribed nitroglycerin for his blood pressure in 1896, and as far as I know, the irony wasn't lost on him. Anyway, I took a really long time to get around to making this chemical for a variety of reasons. First, and most obviously, it scares me. But secondly, this chemical is terrifyingly easy to make, given you have access to the much more difficult to obtain precursors. This made putting out a video on the process feel irresponsible in a way compared to my video on TNT, which by comparison requires a dramatically higher degree of knowledge and laboratory technique to produce. TNT is also much more difficult to manufacture into anything resembling a weapon and nearly impossible to detonate without a primary. This helped me feel ethically okay about putting out a video on the synthesis of TNT, while nitroglycerin, not so much. For now, I plan to leave this video exclusively on Patreon, but I may change my mind eventually. As a side note, there are already over 15 different videos on YouTube detailing how to make nitroglycerin, so I don't think it would be a problem. Anyway, to make nitroglycerin is, as I mentioned, incredibly simple, and in fact, my raw footage for this video only amounted to 14 minutes. To get started, I simply added 20 milliliters of 98% sulfuric acid and 20 milliliters of fuming nitric acid to a beaker. These were both pre-cooled to under 0 degrees Celsius, and the reaction beaker is immersed in a larger beaker of ice water. To this mixture, I slowly add 3.5 grams of glycerin dropwise and under constant stirring. This will immediately begin to react with the nitrating mixture forming trinitroglycerin, which is nitroglycerin. This reaction is extremely exothermic, and so extreme care must be taken to keep the reaction mixture from exceeding 10 degrees Celsius. If the mixture begins to heat up too much, the nitro groups will begin to be added too quickly, leading to a dramatic spike in temperature and a runaway reaction. This will result in a decomposition of the nitroglycerin, which will both destroy the product and liberate plumes of lethal nitrogen dioxide gases, and in a worst case scenario, the entire mixture could detonate. With that in mind, I add the glycerin over about 10 minutes, and then I allow it to continue reacting under constant stirring for another 30 minutes. While that's going on, I'll quickly explain the reaction. Again, this one is pretty simple and begins with the protonation of nitric acid by sulfuric acid forming nitronium ions. These protonated nitronium ions are next attacked by glycerol's electrophilic oxygen atoms which adds the nitro group as an ester. Water is produced as a byproduct which is sequestered by the excess sulfuric acid. And that's the entire reaction, and it's distinct from the nitration of toluene in making TNT. In the case of true nitrations used to make nitro compounds, the nitronium ion is the electrophile. Anyway, once the mixture was allowed to react for 30 minutes, I simply took the reaction beaker out of the ice bath and poured the contents right back in. This resulted in all of the insoluble nitroglycerin settling to the bottom of the beaker, while the soluble acids along with any unreacted glycerin would be dissolved. To this end, the water layer containing the acids is first dumped off, and then the nitroglycerin is thoroughly rinsed by adding around 400 milliliters of fresh water and a few minutes of constant stirring. I eventually cut the stirring, allowed the nitroglycerin to settle to the bottom, and then collected it by drawing it up into a syringe. 
You could also use a small separatory funnel here, which would probably be even better. This was then desiccated at ambient temperature by sulfuric acid and weighed for a final mass of 7.83 grams, representing a 91% yield. This was all used the day I made it, as it really wasn't something I wanted to keep around. On that note, I first tried adding some nitroglycerin to a piece of tin foil and then hitting it with a propane torch. It didn't ignite nearly as easily as I'd expect, however, when it did finally ignite, the nitroglycerin burns away faster than any chemical I'd ever seen. I tried this a few more times with different amounts and on different surfaces, and every time it was really weird to see. I also tried injecting a few cotton balls with one milliliter of the stuff, which burned quite dramatically when ignited. As a final test, I decided to try detonating a small drop by striking it with a hammer. Nitroglycerin is extremely shock sensitive and can be detonated fairly easily by a sharp strike. Unlike when it's burned, however, the impact will cause detonation rather than deflagration. This was something I fully expected and prepared for, but even still, I was pretty shocked when it happened. This single drop produced such an extremely loud report when it detonated that even wearing expensive earmuffs designed for shooting, I was surprised enough that I went ahead and called it a day after this. In reality, the blast was only about as loud as a 38 Special, but given that it occurred within my enclosed lab, the sound waves didn't really have anywhere to escape to. Nitroglycerin also has a blast velocity of 7,820 meters per second, compared to 343 meters per second for the speed of sound, and 290 meters per second for the previously mentioned 38 Special. This means that at least a small sonic boom was produced, which is a lot more jarring to hear than typical subsonic sound. Anyway, as I've mentioned a few times now, the process is remarkably simple, but not something I would ever recommend anyone try themselves under any circumstances, even those of you with a background in chemistry. Toxic gases aside, the final product is simply too unstable to ever handle 100% safely, and any quantities larger than I made here today present risks that are completely unacceptable for the sake of hobby chemistry. With that, I hope you found this interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my wonderful patrons for their generous contributions. Uh, you guys, specifically, since I'm only putting this on Patreon. Your support is vital and very appreciated, and I'm going to do my best to continue bringing more Patreon-exclusive videos like this one. Thank you so much for what you do, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.